about pain, so stop the strength and drop the order of strain. Sex life's a game, so back me down in the pain. I can't wait no more. Cause this is about a quarter past three, and sure they is not I got the big me ballet. I'm just outside the jerk, past the palisade. Yeah, Y'all like his voice. We've been through worse weather like Storm me like you wrote a dead job letter And took my bed and key and cut the leather Yes, you can, baby Is he going to be able to keep up? It's a good question. <laughs> See you later, alligators. Last week, is I, I lost a family member that I have not seen. Um, a cousin of mine that I've not seen probably in... We used to be best friends as kids. and We were first cousins, and um, our dads were brothers, okay? And she lost her parents years ago to... Um, drugs and alcohol they were 43 and 45 okay she's just my age she's two months younger than me or was and uh, 45 okay same age as when her dad died and two years after her mom died okay but i remember she had a hard life okay and she had um and not to say too much about that but but i'm just saying like everybody has a lot of obstacles but we also have a lot of opportunities, and it depends on how we look at that, you know. And um, and and she needed a a, a liver transplant, and uh, and couldn't get one, and and her organs went into failure within 36 hours. She was dead. She, as a, a young girl, and um, and when we were kids, she had this smile that would just like light up the world, and she had this laugh, and she had this free spirit. But inside, it was almost like she was in pain because she came from a very, very hard family. Um, and she was the only child like me. And um, and she would come over and we would play um, Monopoly. And when she would have to choose a chance card, you know, that she would say, take a chance on me. And when I, I got a car and, um, and her parents couldn't get her one and I, I had one and she got me these fuzzy dice for it, you know, and I put them up and... And we would go out together some as teenagers, and um, <clears throat> she would drink, and I, I didn't drink. And, I mean, that was just what she—I didn't really—I was thinking about that today. I didn't think anything about it. Um, and, you know, my parents, I, I come from a broken home now, and they really grew to—it was not a happy home, you know. But, um, and I think we all, a lot of times, come from that. And I talk to Carly about that now, like, you know, when she feels like, well, you know— I don't have the mommy and daddy and baby scenario. I want to look around. Who really does? And a lot of times if they do and it looks like a happy household on the outside, there's pain on the inside. I lived in that for 20 years. A painful situation. And what you have to do is make the best of the opportunities you have and look at the chances and opportunities you have and not the things that are there to bring you down. Because all it boils down to is how you see it. Your mental mindset of that. How do you perceive the situation? What is your reality? You know, that is very true. And you can change your world like that. You can change your health world. You can change your food game. You can change your relationships game. As long as you feel like you're confident in who you are and you're doing the best you can every day, people can cycle in and out of your life. And guess what? I'm still standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, I didn't get to get to a service because there were it was a closed service. And, um, and then somebody told me there was, there was no music. And there was nobody saying anything. And there was no flowers. And there was no celebration of her life. And I really have thought about that today. About how she was. About how we would go out dancing at this place called J-Tracks when we were teenagers. We were, we were just bestest friends. And, um, <clears throat> and she dropped out of high school and, and we would still see each other and all. And, um, and, and she had these long legs. She was one of those girls that was like, we were the same height, okay, wore the same size shoe, same size mini skirt, you know, but she was like super chesty. She kind of had a Marilyn Monroe look with this very whitish kind of, her hair was blonde anyway, but she bleached it out with big blue eyes and, um, and, 
and teeth like these two teeth just like Carly they kind of turned out just a little bit in this very sexy like you know that singer Jewel uh, like her like you think it, it was the perfect imperfect and when she laughed it was contagious and you could feel it you know so this is a little memorial for her because she, that didn't get to be said and that's what I wanted to say at that service and I wanted to see people I haven't seen in years and I wanted to I want to celebrate her life you know but the point of me telling you this is that our days are numbered and does that mean just do whatever eat whatever like there's no tomorrow no it means live clean live in a holistic way that you can feel and experience every moment because she in fact drank and drugged herself to death her organs shut down because they couldn't do it anymore do you know our organs are here to save our life your cellulite's there to save your life because your body's trying to store those crappy toxins you keep funneling in it every day somewhere where it's away from your organs. Let us live. And, and not in a way that we have to... Her, her mom and dad did that. That's where she saw it. That's, and she lived in a lot of pain. And it's a quick fix to a quick death. Whether you die physically or you die mentally and spiritually, it's a quick death, and it's not worth it. It's worth you getting up every day, facing the day, facing what is real. I don't want to deal with it tomorrow. I don't want to deal with it when it comes. No, I'm going to deal with it now, and I'm going to see any situation as the situation at hand, not good or bad, you know? And, um... And she had two children, the two years apart, like mine. They were um, a little bit older than mine. I think her oldest one is uh, 22 and her youngest is 20. And, uh, and now those kids are going to live the rest of their life without a mommy, just like she did. Y'all, we can change. Do y'all believe that? Do you believe people can change? Because the minute we don't believe that, we lose hope. Somebody I used to uh, hang out with all the time told me once, you know, well, I don't think people change. I don't think people can change. I said, well, I see a lot of times people don't change, but if people want to change, they can. And therein lies hope. Right? And if you don't have hope, you got nothing. And along those same lines, guess what? People could be the richest person in the world with the greatest family, the greatest job, the greatest boat, the greatest whatever they think is the greatest thing, and they lose their health. And guess what? All that matters to them is regaining their health. So if you got health, hold on to it tight. And if you don't, if you're living in dis-ease, meaning your body is just not at ease right now, say to yourself, I am the one who will heal. I'm the one who will heal. You know? Never give up on people. That's exactly right. Um, I had uh, somebody not too long ago that I uh, realized that they had some past situations that um, I didn't know about that could be shocking to a lot of people, but you know what? And now they don't. And to me, somebody like that that's really overcome obstacles, I can really jive with those people, you know? I can really feel their passion for helping other people now that deal with that or um, their passion for staying on top of their game because that once you've overcome something, you don't want to go back there anymore, you know? I am the one who will heal. It's true. I used to say that to myself along with other things when I would go through the grocery store or walk down the halls of my old school and I would say, I eat plants. When I would smell the pizza in the workroom or the cafeteria, I eat plants. Or I would bring my green smoothies to school and I would sit at the end of the table and the kindergartners would say, 
Miss Murphy, what is that? I'm like, oh, this is what, oh, I would say, um, let me see what my mommy packed me, and I'd be sitting with the lunch boxers, you know, and they'd be getting out their lunches, and I'm like, oh, she packed me this, and then I pull out my other green smoothie, mmm, and she packed me this, and this little girl, Amy, she's like, Miss Murphy, is your mommy mad at you? <laughs> But you know, it's all what you tell yourself. That that's what it boils down to. It really does. One thing at a time, Penny. One dance at a time. My alcohol therapist said some will and some will not, and there is nothing you can do for them. And some will die from it. You know, I was talking to my mom about that, about uh, this that happened to my cousin. And I was saying, like, isn't that, the irony is chilling. And I remember when her mom died, and I remember going to that funeral, and my cousin didn't go because she couldn't. But I'll tell you what, when my mother dies or my dad, I will stand up and I will speak the truth of the light and love they shared in this world. You know, I will speak about them, and I will suck it up, and I will pay tribute to their life. If my mascara has to run down my face while I do it, I wouldn't miss the opportunity because I couldn't live with myself. But she couldn't go, and um, and nobody could find her, and um, and I went with my mom, and I remember thinking, wow, my mom's right here, you know? Or um, when like my mom will text me and my mom like, will forget what she texts me or she's just not paying attention. Really, she's not that forgetful. But um, it'll be like, she's not a good person to text with. You can get ticked off. Like I, oh, something goes wrong. Okay, so mom, can you just, just call me mom. But it, and you know, none of that matters because I, I still have my mom here. You know what I mean? And I just want to love and I want to, I want to forgive and I want to, I want to love wholehearted to people, you know? Did y'all see where uh, Dan, the life regenerator, got married? And um, he showed, that is the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the daughter of the, the guy and girl that run the Kauai um, Herbal Pharmacy, the tea place. And um, he's, Dan and I, we've, we've been pretty decent friends for a while. And um, we've talked about relationships or just different things. And, um... And he told me one time, he said, you know, I've really come to realize over time, you know, when I'm, I'm looking for a partner or, you know, different things that, um, that if, if you just wait, if you just, if you just wait and you're quiet, the right things will come to you. And he said, and, and you know, you, you think about this, like not what can this person do for me, but how can I show love to them? And that's what he said. And that's what he meant. And, and she looks very beautiful, and they look so great on the beach together. Anyway, um, over on the Life Regenerator, um, Instagram is on there. Most powerful thing I would tell somebody getting started. It would depend, Brian, on where they are, you know. I talked to somebody this morning, and I did some coaching with this girl, and she had sent me a, a, a decent amount of information ahead of time that I really had time to think about, and really I got her, like, two plans. She's not a person that can tolerate fruit well, but she wants to eat all raw. She's having a lot of health issues, you know, and there, there could have been some gut problems and all these different things that we talked about. <laughs> Too